Welcome to Higher Education Matters. I'm Jeb Spaulding, Chancellor of the Vermont State Colleges System, and this regular program is intended to highlight the opportunities, challenges, issues in higher education. We talk about issues like affordability, interesting programs. We talk with students about their experiences, talk about legislation that's winding its way through Washington that might affect the ability of Vermonters to go on to college. We have interesting guests, and we are very lucky today to have the president of both Johnson and Linden State College, Dr. Elaine Collins. Now that's rather unusual for a president to be president of two colleges at one time. How did that come to be, Elaine? Well, initially I was working at Johnson as the president of Johnson, and then the board voted in September to unify Johnson and Linden State Colleges. So I'm working right now uh, to assist the colleges to become the new Northern Vermont University, and that will happen in July of 2018. Wow, that's a big and complicated process. It is. So w what, what was the, the sort of underlying reasons for uh, wanting to unify two colleges to become Northern Vermont University? I think we're entering in a very unique uh, time in higher education. I know I've been in the field for over 25 years and I don't recall across my entire career any time like this. So I think that the decision was spurred by the interest in taking offensive action in a time that's, that's uh, w where we have decreasing demographic college age traditional students entering the field. And so uh, th our thought process went around the question, how can we continue to provide quality education to our students in a time that, that has some uh, economic instability uh, in a way that we can increase their student programming and opportunities and, not, and ensure that it continues into the future. Okay, that's great. So it's, in a way it's intended to uh, ensure that grandparents, parents, students know that the campuses in Linden and Johnson are going to be around for the long run and they're going to be part of a university that's going to continually look for ways to offer students more. Absolutely. And when is this going to actually take place? The actual unification, we open our doors as Northern mm -hmm. Vermont University in July of 2018. Okay, so, it's, so you're out actually recruiting, We're recruiting right, right, now. right now. People right. that are you know, be, be coming next year will be going to Northern Vermont University and is, is, are the names of the campuses going to disappear or are they still going to be around or how is that going to work out? Uh, we're going to be called Northern Vermont University but we will have a campus in Johnson so that will okay. always be there and we will always have a campus in Linden. That's excellent. So I'm just, I think people right away go to one and wonder, well, you know, what's the difference between a college and a university and why Northern Vermont University? What went into, you know, selecting the name Northern Vermont and why university as opposed to college? We celebrate the place where we work. That's a commonality that both okay. colleges share, being in Northern Vermont. So that piece was just a no-brainer. We wanted somehow to foreground that we are proud of our location, that it is something that ties both campuses together, and we wanted that up front. Uh, university, a university usually consists of multiple colleges, and we felt that we met that criterion as well. And in a way, uh, we could start pulling these two campuses together and then add different kinds of opportunities for students that would be, that would be more typically associated with a university. So for instance, we're thinking about a center for teaching and learning and starting that up. We are starting that process. And um, you know, each day we kind of think about new ways to enhance the student experience. We've been talking about signature uh, student programs at each campus. And what we would do is we actually are transporting students to the other campus to attend the signature event and then back. So um, it's just a way to add more excitement and different kinds of programs ha have twice as many available to students than they had in the past. That's very exciting. There's a lot going on there. And when I was uh, recently getting a, a sandwich in a, in a shop in, in up in Chittenden County, uh, the person taking my order was so excited about Northern Vermont University and assuring me that uh, they were getting in their application next week. I, I hope it has come in. Uh, you know, when you think about uh, a university, sometimes I think, well, one of the distinguishing characteristics is they tend to offer graduate programs. Do Johnson and Linden now, and will Northern Vermont University with campuses in Linden and Johnson 
offer master's degree programs? Absolutely. It's part of our longstanding history to offer graduate programs, right. and we will continue to offer those graduate programs and then increase the graduate programs that we offer. That's great, because I, 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 I run into people that didn't know that Johnson and Linden have master's programs now. So, you know, that's a, that's a characteristic of a university. Right. Uh, and you're also very involved in the economy of the, of the northern part of the state as well. I know you're uh, a member of the, the Lamoille County Economic Development Corporation, and you know they've got maker spaces up in Linden, and there are lots of ways. You have business departments that are working with uh, the, the local uh, businesses and offering internship opportunities for students. Is that part of what you hope to do? Is like be uh, a powerful contributor to the economy of the northern part of the state? Absolutely, and I think that goes back to the celebration of place as northern Vermont. I mean, right. we, we are embedded in our communities. We are training our students to be active citizens in their communities to help uh, uplift everything that we do. And so we are increasing our partnerships, we are increasing our outreach, and we really hope to uh, make profound change in those communities. That's wonderful. A lot of colleges and universities are trying to sort of distinguish themselves from the pack in some way and, and say, okay, when you think of Northern Vermont University or Johnson or Linden, here's our unique value proposition. Uh, how do you see, you know, Johnson and Linden and Northern Vermont University distinguishing themselves from the pack? I, I see that uh, one unique, uh, let me start with Johnson. Okay. At Johnson, Johnson is a COPLAC institution that Which stands is? for Council of Public Liberal Arts Colleges. So we have gone through a rigorous process to be uh, certified as a college, now university, that offers premier liberal arts education to students. So that will continue. Comparably, Linden has nationally recognized very unique and interesting professional programs that include a wide range of programs including electronic journalism, uh, music business industry, atmospheric sciences, just to name a few. So okay. that is one way that uh, we add unique value. A second way is that we have just passed a new general education curriculum and we're very excited about that. At its core, uh, so it let has... So ask just a clarifying okay. question. Uh, for viewers, what is a general education curriculum? Okay, typically that is the core curriculum that students engage in in the first two years. That does not mean that they cannot take, I mean they are at the same right. time in some cases taking major courses, right. but it's really the some of the, the foundation that the you want foundation, all the students to take. The, right, exactly. Or most all students. That's right, right. Yeah. that's okay. exactly right. Okay, so you're re reviewing and creating a new gen general ed curriculum for both colleges? Exactly. So okay. thank you, thanks to the generous uh, funding from the Davis Educational Foundation, our faculty have been working very hard in committees to uh, conceptualize a brand new general education curriculum that will begin in fall of 2018. And at its heart, it asks the question uh, for the students, so if I were the student, it would ask me to consider how can I make an impact, a great impact on my world? What can I do to make that impact? So what we've done is uh, we're offering a variety of courses, but what is new about this particular curriculum is that it will also include a first year uh, experience course, and it will also include some enrichment courses that are more interdisciplinary in some unique areas uh, to Northern Vermont University that include social justice, that include climate change, and sustainability. That's excellent. Yeah. So, you know, it, that's, are there other places that do that, or is that pretty unusual? I mean, I can't think of any myself. So that, those are pretty strong distinguishing characteristics for, for Northern Vermont universities. I think a first-year experience right. would be found across many right. different institutions because we all recognize how important it is to uh, start a student off with a very positive and uh, a strong understanding of what is expected at a, a university level. So, I mean, that, that is, uh, I don't think, a distinguishing feature by itself. But I think what is very interesting is this kind of notion of the enriched courses that we're offering that are interdisciplinary in nature. And it's a way, again, of tying the historical interests of both of these institutions moving out into the future. Okay. Well, that's, that's pretty super. Are students 
you know, you had mentioned it earlier, but just getting back to it in terms of a, a, a benefit to students, will they have access to more educational opportunities or co-curricular opportunities or maybe potentially even athletic opportunities under a unified university with campuses in Johnson and Linden? Yes, they will. Uh, let me just kind of break that up into a few parts. Academically, students have already taken taking, uh, joint types of courses. There was a psychology course, for example, that ended with a study abroad trip where students were able to uh, go and see Bedlam Hospital and uh, the, uh, learn more about Freud and his work in Europe. And so uh, that was a real interesting joint kind of opportunity for students. We also have a business uh, in kind of both business faculty are working together right now to teach the program. So that is a joint program that will uh, be offered to students. And it will, for example, add for the Johnson campus the opportunity to have a degree in accounting where we didn't offer that major before. So, okay. and that's just one example. And, and uh, you know, for courses like that, are students Going to, be, going to have to drive back and forth, or you know, how, how are you planning to, I mean, that, that would be a challenge for students, wouldn't it? So yes, it would. Uh, right now, in the business department, the instructors are actually commuting to the different campuses. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And then we're using telepresence classrooms to tie the classes both together so that the students have access. Okay, so in terms of telepresence, it's using video technology, but the classes, I mean, they're probably recorded if people want to watch them later or something like that, but they're live so that they're, yes. it's not like just purely online. Oh, no. You, you, you know, just sort of, yeah. No, you feel like the, I mean, the, in this case, in the business case, the instructor is right there in the room with the students, right. okay, at least on one campus right. and then alternating for the next um, campus. Right. And, and so you feel like you are just in a regular classroom setting. You can ask questions. The students in the other campus where the professor isn't um, located can also ask questions, so it just feels, it, it has the feel of a regular classroom. Yeah, I, I really believe that over time, this is a, a very powerful improvement in what Johnson and Linden campuses as part of Northern Vermont University can offer. And if, you know, the viewers are thinking about it, you know, in terms of, okay, I'm just gonna make up round numbers of, you know, full and part-time faculty. Let's just say each Johnson and Linden, if they did have 100 each. Right. And, under the old world, you had two separate colleges, each with a faculty of 100 that for the most part didn't really even know each other. Under the new paradigm, you've got one institution, two campuses, but a faculty of 200. And over time, you know, it's not going to happen all at once, but over time, you're going to find ways where there are, there are faculty that have certain expertise at one, one campus and others with a different expertise on another campus and the experience for students is going to be a, a significantly more rich experience. Absolutely, because now they have a double network of, right. of people that, and experts that they can work with. Right. And, um, you know, it, it's rare to find a student interest. I mean, you might have a broad interest, but if you have a narrow interest in a subject and then uh, a professor on the other campus has the same interest, then we can link those, those uh, two up. So I think that is a benefit. And additionally, um, I think another academic benefit is the opportunity, given that now they have twice the number of courses that they can take, let's say, uh, another academic benefit is it will be much harder to fall behind in terms of the timeline, because they can always get into a class, and classes will not be canceled as much, because we have more students that are just forming the basic pool in those classes. That's excellent. So I remember, uh, so w within the Vermont State Colleges system, we currently have five institutions. Johnson and Linden are two of them, but coming Northern Vermont University. We also have Castleton University, which until a few years ago was Castleton State College. Uh, and when it converted to university status, I do remember some people asking the question, gee, does becoming a university mean that A, it's gonna be more expensive than it otherwise would be for students, uh, or is it going to mean that I can't get into it anymore? You know, the, the expectations are higher. And um, at least with Castleton, I remember the answer to those were, were no. You know, just going to university status, if anything, you know, if it, if, it, it, if it becomes more attractive for students to come and you get more students, it can either offer expenses lower than they might otherwise would have been or increased funding back in to improve the student experience. 
Do you think that'll be the same in Northern Vermont University? I do. I very much do. Uh, okay. Our intention is to continue to provide the great access that the state college system provides to students. Okay. So that is our mission, and we will continue to do that at an affordable cost. Okay. And when students are, you know, if they're, if they're parents or grandparents out there thinking, gee, Northern Vermont University sounds pretty good, uh, and, you know, maybe we ought to be thinking about recommending that to our mm -hmm. grandchild or child or if you're a school counselor or what have you or a business person that knows people. Um, will students need to sort of figure out, okay, depending on what I want to do, like, you know, liberal arts or professional programs, I ought to be thinking about one campus or the other. I mean, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but do people, students, I mean, if they want to, if they want to go into the atmospheric sciences program, they, they ought to go to, to, to the Linden campus, right? They might still take courses and, and experience lectures and travel opportunities and stuff, but they would make a decision, I think, to go to the Linden campus. Right, so there will be a decision made with respect to a home campus, and the right. home campus will be driven by the program. It can be driven by a sport. So you asked earlier, uh, we are planning to continue to offer uh, Badgers and Hornet athletic opportunities, so there'll be two different NAC uh, competing groups and they will both operate under NVU. But for instance, let's take Linden. If a student is very much interested in baseball and we offer both, um, let's say they're interested in baseball and uh, education, all right? Those educations offered on both campuses, but baseball is only offered at Linden. So the home campus becomes Linden at that point. Okay. So what I would encourage people to do is to visit the campuses, to find out uh, what unique things are offered, and then to identify the home campus where they feel most comfortable. That's excellent. And before I forget, okay. uh, if people visit the campuses, of course, Johnson and Linden each have their own websites, but there is a, already a Northern Vermont sort of portal website that gets you into it, right? It's yes. no Northern Vermont, Vermont spelled out, dot E-D-U. E right. Northern Vermont, dot E-D-U. So people can, can find out more there, Access too. Access more information Which there. is excellent. And plus you have your admissions teams are out and around and, uh, you know, there's we're, we're looking for every opportunity to get the, the word out about this exciting Absolutely. Our marketing ads are going out every day. Right. Uh, we can answer any questions uh, with a just calling in and would be happy to do so. And I, I, I think people will be relieved if they have a student athlete in their family to know that, you know, it's not like there's going to be, you know, one basketball team for Northern Vermont University. Absolutely. And, and their, their, their child or grandchild or you might have to commute back and forth to, to get to the back, ba basketball practices. No, so, yeah. right. Good to know. Okay. So I'm, I'm curious in your own mind, uh, Dr. Collins, um, what is the value of a, a liberal arts degree in today's world? And I know there is, and I know that, you know, if you look out and say, look, I mean, you know, most of the, 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 the people that get to be the head of a corporation or, you know, elected officials or, you know, m many if not most of them have a liberal arts background. But there's also a lot of questioning out there these days when, you know, there's so much of a focus on, you know, if I get a college degree, I want to make sure I get a job and I get paid Absolutely. well. Absolutely. How does liberal arts sort of fit into that desire? I think uh, the way I think about it is it's liberal arts at work. It's liberal arts at work. So what can I learn during a liberal arts experience that will make me an employee who can think in dynamic new ways, who can critically problem solve, who can collaborate with groups, who can understand cultures and differences in unique ways. I think that's what it's all about for our future society. And so uh, I think that a liberal arts training will provide that type of education. We do have data to indicate that even perhaps if a student engages in more technical education at the beginning, uh, going into a first job, they may enter at a higher rate. However, the liberal arts student continues to get promotions throughout and by mid-career exceeds sometimes mm. uh, those students who have entered with a technical background. Excellent. Yeah, and it's good, good to keep in mind that, you know, many of the uh, jobs that are going to be available 10 years from now haven't even been created today. That's exactly and right. some businesses and whole industry sectors that were leading industries and sectors 10, 20 years ago don't even exist exactly. anymore. So people, you know, need to do more than just learn very specific 
technical skills. They need to learn how to learn and That's be critical right. thinkers. And That's a liberal right. arts education can really help in that regard. And to be fluid and to not be afraid of change right. because okay. that's the future. So I had a, a, a couple more things to cover. Uh, and one is big and one is relatively small. But uh, for the issue of diplomas, mm -hmm. um, you know, if somebody has graduated, uh, you know, maybe, maybe they're gra if they're graduating this coming May, they're going to get a degree from one of the Lyndon or Johnson. And right. Then next year it would be Northern Vermont University, I assume. A choice. A, a choice. Okay. A choice. Yeah, tell me how that diploma situation is going to work out, both for the students that are there now, the students that are coming in, and perhaps alumni out there that went to one or the other. Okay, so for students who are graduating this year, we w are still doing business as Linden State College and Johnson State College. So that will be reflected in the diplomas that they receive. For students next year, uh, who primarily came into the universe or the colleges under the old names, uh, they will have the choice. They can choose to retain Linden State College or Johnson State College or choose Northern Vermont University. After that, it will be all Northern Vermont University. Okay. For alums, we offer the opportunity to call in for a commemorative diploma that will indicate that they uh, have graduated from Northern Vermont University. That's great. I think people will be interested. I remember when Castleton did something similar, there were a lot of alumni that were very interested in that opportunity. So We're already getting calls. Are you really? Yeah, That's yeah. Great. They, That's great. They have interest in So that. listen, uh, one of the very exciting opportunities for high school students in Vermont uh, is called early college. And if, you know, the viewers are out there thinking about, gee, college is expensive, and it is, uh, it's, it's got a great return on investment. I always like to say, yeah, it's not just economic. The people that get a college degree are, are, are going to, uh, on the whole, on average, have better health outcomes. They're going to vote more. They're going to participate in, in uh, community affairs more. There's a lot, they're less likely to get in trouble with the law. So there are a lot of values to uh, a college education, but it can cost money. Early college is an opportunity for high school students to combine their last year of high school and their first year of college mm -hmm. uh, at no tuition to the student. And it's a pretty exciting program at, at Johnson. It's been growing over the years. Would you tell us a little bit about the uh, early college opportunities and how students uh, or families ought to you know, find out about what that opportunity is? Most of the, uh, well, we, we are reaching out to high schools right now to talk to students about the early college programming. So we are out around okay. Vermont State and, and talking about the program that we offer. Uh, the program itself, as you mentioned, provides a full first year completely free of college education. So I know that it is. I mean, that would be like a 25% reduction in the tuition right. for a bachelor's degree. That's right. Or 50% or if you were going the associate's degree route. So. And, and there are other benefits. Right. I find that students feel more socially comfortable uh, right. to continue once they have succeeded right. in a college experience. So I think that that has been a huge benefit as well. Uh, I've heard that students just feel that the uh, opportunity to come in and take college courses and to really think through their major in ways that they may not have thought about yet in high school has been helpful as well. And, and homeschool students sometimes have, have found it very Absolutely. valuable as well. We are recruiting from all over Vermont. Okay. Right. So, you know, when somebody does early college, I mean, I don't know what, you, you probably know what the percentages are, not that it's that important, but I mean, they could stay at Northern Vermont University, Johnson and Linden, and continue on right there, or they can take their first year and apply to someplace else and, and transfer credits and you know actually have demonstrated some something that's pretty uh, valuable in terms of their application to some other place. Uh, do, do people do both or what you know do you know roughly what percentage stays at Johnson or Linden? I do. Uh, we've had anywhere up to 50 percent staying for their for the rest of their education. Okay. Uh, some years down to maybe the lowest of 35 percent. Okay, that's great, you know. So and, and there's and there's also just briefly there's dual enrollment opportunities for high school students to take individual courses correct. as a junior or senior that they can also explore that's right. uh, at your websites, I assume. Yes, okay. they can call and in the agency of education. And their high schools. And their right. high schools, okay. Guidance counselors right. Right. can well, help that's them a, with that's that. a good opportunity too. Right. I wish we had time to talk about that more. I, I did want to talk a little bit about uh, the 
you know, and I, I hope the viewers can see how much excitement there is at, at, at Johnson Linden and Northern Vermont University, and it's a very forward-thinking, energetic place. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, areas which I know that's important to you going into the future is distance learning. Mm -hmm. uh, and where does distance learning, what is it, and how does it fit in with the future of Northern Vermont University? Well, distance learning provides access in ways uh, to people in remote areas and for people who have other kinds of responsibilities. So for example, if they're adult learners and they have children at home and they need um, time to just kind of select their own kind of time for when they can study, when they have time to access the lectures or, or whatever's happening in the classrooms, distance learning provides the means for them to do that. So we are looking at increasing our distance learning programs uh, and reaching out to people with new and exciting new programs that they can consider. And is that going to be a growth area for, for Absolutely. Northern University? Absolutely. It yeah. will. It will. And, you know, some people have asked the question, I wonder what your view on it is, that, you know, well, with, you know, Northern Vermont University online, let's say, uh, you know, there, you might have students from anywhere in the country. Why is that good for Vermonters and the, the Vermont students at Northern Vermont University. I mean, why should we care about whether Northern Vermont University is offering programming to people all around the country or the world? I believe in the strength of diversity. I mean, we were talking about uh, earlier about um, what are the benefits of liberal arts education. Yeah. Linden has a very strong liberal arts program as well. And so I think there's a commonality there. We both extremely believe in the benefits of diverse thinking. Uh, diverse, diversity in terms of ethnicity uh, and diversity in terms of just uh, all religion, all kinds of um, orientations, for example. So I think it, it provides access to a lot of different types of people, a lot of different types of thinking, and it just makes us all stronger in the end. That's great. And it, it probably helps to provide resources, financial resources that can improve the programming and pr increase financial aid for Vermonters uh, as well. Absolutely, and I think, I think in the end, it's, it's a question of networks. I mean, we are growing networks that way. And, you know, we can choose to have networks that reside solely in the state, or we can expand our networks and opportunities across the nation and across the world. And I just want students to have the most, uh, the most uh, opportunities, I guess, that they can have. Well, great. I hate to tell you this, but we've run out of time, Dr. Okay. Collins. It's right. very exciting. Johnson & Linden becoming Northern Vermont University. Uh, people can either go to northernvermont.edu. I'm sure you could just Google Northern Vermont University and that will get you there. Uh, this is one of the exciting institutions that are members of the Vermont State College's system. Uh, and if you're interested in finding out more about our other sister institutions, Castleton Community College of Vermont or Vermont Tech, I encourage you to go to www.vsc.edu. I thank you very much for tuning in today, and I hope you'll come and visit us at our next program.